and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at arrays now what exactly is an array so to give you an idea of what it could be let's say we have all of our friends so I have friend one friend two uh, friend three and so on and these friends all have like Mike, Nick, Jack. Now we can have a hundred friends or a thousand friends. The point is we can have friends. Now the problem with this is you're going to, if you have a hundred friends, you're going to need a hundred lines to store those friends. So each variable needs a friend. If you want to go through all of your friends and check whose name is equal to a specific string. So let's say you want to um, check if, so this is your name. Uh, let's go name is equal to Mike. Now, if you want to see who else has the same name as you, you'll have to go if friend one is equal to Mike to name and you have to do something. So this card or if friend two is equal to name, do something. Friend three is equal to name. You constantly have to do that. Now that's also a very, very inefficient way of programming. Instead, what we could do is we could create an array that can store the names of our friends. So let's create a variable called friends. So it's plural. Take note of that. That's just good practice. And now, all we do is we go one, two, and then three. And now we can remove this friends list because now we have an array with all three of our friends in it, Mike, Nick, and Jack. So now we have an array with these values in them. To access these values, we can actually just go echo friends at index zero. Take note, we will always start at index zero when we work with arrays. In other languages, such as Lua, you start at index one, but in Nim, you start at index zero. So if you run this, you get Mike. So here we got Mike. If we say one, then we'll get Nick. Two, we'll get Jack. Three, we'll get whoever would have been after them. So if we go one, then we'll get Nick. So basically these indexes work like this. This is index zero, index one, index two and so on and so forth, depending on how many people you add in here. If you try to use an index that does not exist, you'll just get an error saying it does not exist in zero to two. So instead of having an if statement for each and every friend, you can do it all with one if statement. You can even do something like this. If name in friends echo found someone with the same name. Now, if we run it, it will print it out because there's someone with the name Mike here. If I said Mike's, it will not print anything out. So here with this if statement, we check if this name exists inside of this array. Now let's talk a little bit more about arrays. So let's say we have A and this, we can specify it's going to be an array. So it's of type array. Now we can specify how long this array should be and what data type it should hold. So as we can say free and int, make that equal to one, two, and three. Now we have a variable a that's of type array. It can only hold up to three values that are of type integer. So if we say 2.0, we're going to get an error. If we were to say four here, which is a four value, we're going to get an error. So it can only hold up until three values and it has to be of type int. So that is what we're basically saying here. Now we can of course echo out a at index one, which will give us two. Don't get confused just because I have one here, it still starts at index zero. So we'll get two and two here will give us four. But as you saw, you didn't need to specify anything like this. If you go like this, then it will automatically guess for you. So zero to two and of type int. So you don't have to specify, but if you do specify, then you know. That also means you can't add anything to this array. 
So once you've created the array, you cannot add more things to it. And we'll get into that in a second. If you want to create an empty array, or at least a variable that will hold an array, then you will have to specify its type and how much it can hold. So four and it's a of type Boolean. So this is how I can specify an empty array. And this should of course be var because you're going to reassign it later. Because just by doing this, you'll notice we get an error because empty in this context will result into an empty array. It doesn't contain any data, which means you cannot add anything to this. You can't remove anything from it. You can't get anything from it. It's just going to be an empty array with nothing as a value. So if you want to create an empty array, this is the way to go. You have to specify the type. And we'll get deeper into that in a second. And then you also have something called a multidimensional array. I'm not going to dive too deep into multidimensional arrays. However, I will cover the basics. So let's say we have an array and this array can hold two values of type array. So multidimensional array will hold another array inside of it. And let's say of three values and it will type int. Now, if we were to create this, we'll have this array and it can have two arrays inside of it. That's what we're saying. So it can have two arrays inside of it. And each of these two arrays can have three values in them. So two, four, six, and 100, 200, 300. So this array holds multiple values inside of it. If we were to echo out Z, we will receive this. If we were to say Z at index zero, we will receive this array. So if we go like that, we get this. So this here is index zero, and this here is index one. Now, each of these values has their own indexes inside of them. So if we say 0, 1, then it will go, okay, the first one at its first index. So this is index 0, and then index 0, index 1. So we'll get 4. Run this, we'll get 4. And if we change this to use the second array, we'll get 200. Now, this is a somewhat complex topic. So I'm not going to dive too deep into it just yet. But just know that you can have an array that stores other arrays. Cool. Now let's talk a little bit about indexing. So let's go and say two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay. There we go. So now we can echo a at index zero. We know that will give us two. It will give us the first value inside of a. So two. Now what you could also do is you can use this, this caret symbol and then one. This means get the last element in the array, which is 12. If you use this, you'll get, get the second last element. So this is get the first last element in the array and this is get the second last element in the array. So now, now we'll get 10. So you can use this to count backwards. However, take note, it does not start at zero. It starts at one. You can also get a bunch of values back from an array. For example, one, dot dot three. This means give me all of the values from index one to index three. So from index one to three. If you run this, we'll get four, six, eight. So it gives you index one, two, and three. So it includes three as well. You could also do this, meaning give me all or give me from one to index three, but excluding index three. So it will give you four and six. So if you run this, you'll get four and six. So it excludes the last value. And we're going to, of course, increase this to, let's say, five and two. And now if we run it, we'll get six, eight, and 10. Or we can go one, two, five, and now we'll get four up until 12. So of course, this can become very powerful depending on what you do. Now back to that for e becomes array and let's say free of int, right? So let's say we have this. Now, as I said, we cannot use let because let is set at runtime and it's a constant value, meaning you can't change it. So this is this whole thing where now we didn't have any values inside of this array, but we still need to add to it. So we cannot make this array a let. 
Now to add things to the array, we can just say, let's echo E. And let's also then go E at index zero is equal to 10. E at index one is equal to 20. And E at index three, two is equal to 30. And we can echo E again. So we can use the indexes and an equal symbol to assign values to that index if the array is a bar. Now, if we run it, we'll get zero, zero, zero. So by default, all of the indexes will just be populated with zero until we fill it, in which case they will now have their filled value. If you don't fill the middle one, then that will be zero. So it's good to take note of that. And that's that for arrays. Tune in for the next video where we'll be covering sequences and what they are. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.